Get your notebooks ready because this is one of the best tricks that I haven't yet covered on my channel. One of my personal favorites that I can almost guarantee you're gonna love. It's to do with identical work rates. Let's look at the kind of question that I mean. We're gonna have four examples today. The question is, six identical machines take 12 seconds to complete a job. How many such machines would it take to complete a job in nine seconds? And even for those students who think they can do this question, just wait until you get to the last one, unless you have a time-saving trick like the one I'm gonna give you. Now, some of you are gonna point out, but Philip, don't you have another video on work rates? Yes, but not on identical work rates. I have videos on questions where one person takes 10 minutes to do something, another person takes 50 minutes. How long do they take working together? That's very different from this type of work rate question where people are going at identical rates, the same constant rate. There is a massive shortcut for this kind of question, which is relatively difficult to solve using the other method. Even if you're one of those people who completed this question in a minute or two minutes, watch the time-saving method I can give you. And we're always gonna follow the same three steps. That's the brilliant news. That's the bit you're gonna love. It's always the same three steps, always in the same order. I call it, well, I made up this term yesterday, but I call it the MAD method. Multiply, adjust, divide. Always the same three steps. Multiply, adjust, divide. What do we multiply in step one? We multiply the number of identical workers with the time they take to do a certain task, to do a certain job. So we're multiplying workers times time. In this question, we have six identical workers, in this case machines. It will usually be robots and machines in the questions because humans don't tend to work at identical rates, but it might be humans. You've got to watch for the question, but always watch out for the word identical or same. Let's multiply those six machines by the time they took, which was 12 seconds. Six machines times 12 seconds equals 72. And if you want a unit, it's machine seconds. I do recommend writing out the units. I never used to, but I find it helps students retain the method better. So if we multiply machines and seconds, we're gonna get machine seconds. A bit like how Einstein combines space and time to get space time. We're doing the same with work and time. Second, next thing is we must label what we achieved in that time. These 72 machine seconds were what we needed to complete one job. Now this step may not seem super necessary for this question, but trust me, when the questions get harder, you'll be very glad that you labeled it with the task that you achieved. Step two is adjust if needed. And when I say adjust, I'm talking exclusively about the job we're doing, the task we're doing. In the first sentence, we're talking about one job. In the second sentence, we may have been talking about two jobs or half a job or four jobs. It depends on the question. In this case, there's no need to adjust because in the first sentence, we're given information about one job. And in the second sentence, the question is asking us about one job as well. So no need to adjust. Sometimes this second step, the adjust step is not needed. That's why I wrote if needed but usually it will be needed, but in this case, it wasn't needed. So we can move straight on to divide. The last step is we always divide by either the time deadline that we're given or by the workers that we're given. And you'll see why this makes sense because the units are gonna cancel out. Here, we were given a time deadline of nine seconds. So we're gonna divide by nine seconds. And notice what happens. The seconds in the units cancel out. You could draw a line through them in this fraction. And what would be left? Machines. So we have 72 divided by nine, which is eight, eight machines. The answer is it would take us eight machines to complete this job in nine seconds. Answer C. Always the same three steps, always in the same order. But I know what you're wondering. Amazing method, Philip, but give us a question where we need to adjust in the middle. So here it is. Pause, see if you can do it yourself. It's a hard one. In the GRE, we're already approaching a 165 plus level question. Quick shout out, if you got this right using my method, please do let me know in the comments. 
The question is, it takes 15 minutes for four identical software programs to render two widgets. How many minutes would it take for six identical software programs to render five widgets? So I move things around to throw you off. Let's see if you followed the MAD method very carefully. Step one is multiply. The workers by the time. I hope you didn't get the two involved because that's the task that we're achieving. Step one is only the workers or the programs or the machines times the time. In this case, four programs times 15 minutes. The two was what they achieved. That's the task. That's what we're going to label for step two. But step one is simply the workers times time. And yes, again, I labeled it program minutes, or in this case, prog minutes to save time. Four times 15 is, of course, 60. So 60 prog minutes. Yes, we are going to remember to label this. We achieved two widgets in this time. That label is important, especially for this question. Now we need to adjust. In the second sentence, in the sentence in which they ask us the actual question, they ask us to render five widgets. So we need to adjust the 60 program minutes because that was only for two widgets. Here's how I do that. I always divide to get down to one and then multiply to get up. So I divide both sides by two and that's 30 program minutes for one widget. Then multiply by five, 150 program minutes for five widgets. We must adjust to match the goal that the question sets us. In this case, rendering five widgets. Pause and take your time if any of these steps sound confusing. What's the final step in the MAD method? It's divide. And are you very confident what we're gonna be dividing by? Are we dividing by five? Are we dividing by two? Are we dividing by four, 15? No, we're dividing by six. The divide method is always using the deadline they give you in the final sentence or the number of workers that they give you in the final sentence. That's why I wrote in the brackets, divide by time or workers. It's one of those two things. But don't get distracted by the four and the 15. That was in the first sentence. That was for two widgets. We've moved on now. We're talking about the five widgets. So it's the six identical software programs that we're given for that task. If we divide by six programs, notice what happens to the units. The programs cancels with the programs in the numerator and denominator, leaving you with minutes. So it makes sense that the answer is 150 divided by six, 25 minutes. It would take us 25 minutes if we had six programs to render five widgets. It's a universal method, it's a wonderful method. So I'm gonna give you two further questions because I couldn't help myself. I love this method so much. If you love it as much as me, please do let me know in the comments. Next question, pause, try it yourself, and then let me know how it goes. So the question is, Dewani takes 12 seconds to label a parcel, while Denisa takes 10 seconds to do the same task. How many seconds to the nearest second would Dewani and Denisa working simultaneously and independently take to label three parcels? Now this was kind of cruel of me. Those of you who pause and try this would get pretty angry with me at the moment and say, oh, Philip, this is not an identical work rate question. Why are you giving it to us? The reason I do this is because I really wanna teach the difference between an identical work rate question and a normal work rate question. This is a normal work rate question. I shouldn't even have the title identical work rates because they're not going at identical rates. The one is taking 12 seconds, the NISA is taking 10 seconds. I just wanted to see if I could fool you about the difference between identical work rates and normal. I don't want you to just always use the identical work rate trick just because you think it's so good. In this case, we wouldn't use it, we'd use our normal work rate method as featured in my other work rate videos, which you can check out in my Quant playlist. I've got a five week playlist covering everything you need to know in Quant. Well, 99% at the moment, it's almost done. Okay, let's solve this question using the normal work rate method because they're not going at identical speeds. We can't use the identical work rate method. Okay, the normal method involves converting the times into rates. So Dewani's time was 12 seconds, so her rate is one over 12. Denise's time is 10, so her rate is one over 10. Add these up to get a combined rate. Those fractions add up to 11 over 60, I believe. You always flip the combined rate to find the combined time. So 11 over 60 becomes 60 over 11. That's the time they take. But we're always going to label our tasks 
that's per one parcel. That is the one thing in common between the two methods. You do need to label your tasks, label your output. So 60 over 11 seconds per parcel. Now don't round at this point, by the way, don't convert that to a decimal and then round at this point. Always round at the end, always round when you're done with the question. I know it's said to the nearest second, but let's round at the end. Because this was only for one parcel, we need to label three parcels. So multiply this by three, and that's how many seconds we need for three parcels. And now we calculate and round. So 180 divided by 11, I believe is something like 16.36. I calculated earlier, which rounds of course to 16. Whereas if you round too early, actually I haven't worked this out, but let me see what would happen here. If we do 60 divided by 11, that would be, was that 5 point, it'd be 5.4 something, right? 5.45 maybe, so that rounds to five which if you multiply by three gets you 15. So if one of the other answer choices had been 15, I should have put that actually, then you might have picked that if you rounded too early. Whereas if you round at the end, you get the correct answer of 16. So always be careful about rounding too early. Now, I know this is kind of cruel. This wasn't an identical work rate question, but hopefully it taught you the difference of when it is identical and when it's not. The final question, I guarantee you, will be an identical work rate question, and it's the hardest of the lot. So even those of you who've been following so far, try your best and good luck on this final super difficult 170 level or in GMAT 750 level identical work rate question. Here it is. 12 factory robots working at the same constant rate take Y hours to sort Z items. How many factory robots in terms of Y and Z would it take to sort 100 items in five hours? First thing to notice, I know I didn't use the word identical, but it said same. So we do know this is an identical work rate question. We're gonna follow, of course, the MAD method. The workers here are robots. So we have 12 workers and they take Y hours. So let's multiply that. That's 12 times Y, of course, 12 Y robot hours. Always label your tasks, always label your jobs. This was for how many items? for Z items, so equals Z items. Now we move on to adjust. The next sentence, the question sentence, didn't ask us to sort Z items. It asked us to sort 100 items, so we need to adjust. Remember what I said two questions ago. What I do is I always divide to find one task, one job. So in this case, I divide both sides by Z to find out the time it takes for one item. Dividing both sides by Z, 12Y over Z, robot hours, is required for one item. Now it's easy to scale up to 100 items. Multiply both sides by 100 and we get 1200Y over Z, robot hours, for 100 items. We're almost done, but what's the last step of the MAD method? We divide by either the time deadline they give us or the number of workers they provide. In this case, they gave us a deadline of five hours. So we're gonna divide by five. Dividing 1200Y over Z by five gets you, I believe, 240Y over Z, which is answer A. So that's the correct answer. And you can see even in this hardest of algebraic contexts, the method still holds up. That's why it goes down as one of my favorite ever GMAT and GRE methods. Please do let me know if you liked it as much as I do and have a wonderful day.